Hi, I'm Carol Rothman, and I'm going to show you how to make a simple glued up lamination, which you can use for a basket or a bowl or a similar project. If you are like most woodworkers, you accumulate all sorts of, of scraps around the shop that you can't bear to throw away but don't really have use to. Small pieces like these. These can be glued up to make something really interesting. I'm going to show you how. The first thing that you do is you look at your pattern and you figure out where you want things to be. You don't want to just glue, glue up things in a hodgepodge manner or that's exactly what it will look like. Here I figured out that I needed a center strip about three inches wide, I needed two pieces of wood that were narrow, and I needed side pieces of about two inches. So the first thing that I do is to measure and cut the pieces to size. So here on this piece of cherry, I've marked off about two inches, and I'm going to cut it on the scroll saw, and then I'm going to smooth it. I've put a piece of tape over this, because cherry is a hardwood, and without tape, it tends to burn. So I'm going to go over to the scroll saw now, and we're going to cut the wood. As now, I'm using a number 12 Flying Dutchman reverse blade, with, which is a nice, aggressive blade. I put on my dust mask, because this will kick up a lot of dust, and I'm going to cut it on the line. Okay. Now I have my piece cut. Since I'm going to be gluing it up, although the side is quite straight, it's not quite glue line straight. So the next step is to bring it over to my sander and give me a nice flat surface to which I'll glue the strip. So let's go over to the sander now. Okay, I'm going to be sanding it on this disc sander. Since the sander sands more aggressively at the outer edges than the center, I'm going to center it and give it very light strokes in order to not get curvature at the ends of it. All right, I'm going to turn on the sander now, put on my dust mask because it flips up a lot of dust, and I'm going, then I'm going to sand. Right, when I've finished sanding it, I'm going to double check and make sure there are no gaps on this edge. So I take a nice surface, this table is a nice flat surface, and if I put it down and it sits nicely on it, then I have an edge that will be sufficient to glue the strip to. So now we're going to start doing the glue up. All right, now I've cut all of my pieces to size in accordance with my pattern, and I'm going to glue them up. I'm going to glue them strip by strip with white glue, I prefer using weld bond glue. It's a white catalyzed PVA glue that dries clear. It grabs very nicely, which is important if you don't want things to slide, and holds very well, sets up quickly. But after I glue it up, I'm going to clamp them with these clamps. Since I'm going to be cutting a pattern from the middle of it, I don't need to protect the edges. If I were going to need the edges, I would put an extra strip of wood to protect it. Normally also, I like to put a strip of wood across called a core, which I clamp down to keep things from buckling. But since I left my center strips a little high, since I didn't want them to risk being too low, I'm not going to be able to do that. All right, starting with the first strip, I take my glue, which I've transferred to, it's actually a Cake decorating supplies, short, a very soft bottle that's easy to squeeze. And I'm going to squeeze a nice generous amount on my wood. And I'm going to use my finger to spread the glue evenly. And I'm going to rub it on the next piece, back and forth, to get a good join. Rubbing it back and forth helps take out any little air pockets. 
and gets it started joining so that in some instances where you can't use a clamp because things would slip out of alignment, if you get a good join just from rubbing back and forth, you can dispense with the clamp. All right, so this is the first piece. Now I'm going to go on to the next piece. Squeeze out more glue. Trying to get a nice even coat. I'm going to rub that back and forth. And now I'm going to pull the last strip in place. Doing the same thing, covering the surface nicely with glue. Put it in place, and I rub it back and forth just as I did the other one. Make sure that the strips are even with each other. And now I'm going to clamp them. I have my clamp set to approximately the right size so I can put it into place and gently tighten. One on one side. watching as I clamp that they don't slip out of alignment and that the pieces don't pop up. Since I can't very well put a piece across the top because it's at different heights. The aim is to get some glue squeeze out, which says you've got enough glue, but not so much that the piece gets sloppy. Once the glue has set up slightly, you can scrape it off. If you try washing it away at this point, you risk diluting the glue and creating a situation where when you go to, go to apply your finish, it won't take nicely and you'll see patches of glue. All right, so now that this is nice and even, I check the, the edges to make sure that they're nice and flat. What I'll do is I'll give this a good dry for several hours or overnight before continuing the cuts that go across to finish up the lamination. 